The waiting game is an endless one, and I'm sure a lot of us are thinking, should we hold off on buying any more Teslas until we can ensure that we get a vehicle with these next generation 4680 cells that were talked about on battery day? They seem to have very little degradation. In fact, there's even some research being done on these batteries by Jeff Dunn, showcasing that the range and cycle life of these new cells could be between a million or two million miles. Basically, these new batteries are gonna last you the life of the car. I think that's safe to assume at this point, and and with the added range benefits, with the lower cost implementation, is it a bad idea to buy any Tesla today that does not rock those next generation cells? Honestly, a lot of the things we talk about in today's video may seem rather obvious, but I still think that they need to be brought up and people need to hear them to really truly think about this subject. And the truth is, if you're willing to wait pretty much with any type of technology, you will always find out something better or figure out that there's another breakthrough or another next generation cell sell in the works and the waiting game is really truly endless. I don't think that this is the last final battery Tesla will ever develop and they don't need to innovate or improve it from here on out. Very likely even after they've ramped up production of the 4680 cell and they're using it in every single vehicle, they'll probably be hard at work at the next generation cell that will make that cell feel stupid and they'll be working on getting EVs cheaper with better range because Tesla doesn't stand still. They don't stop and this is merely one one stage in the process of electrification and making more sustainable transport. And if it sounds compelling to you and it sounds like value and worth that fit your needs, I would say go for it. Yeah, wait for the 4680 sales and as soon as that $25,000 Tesla is available, make sure you pick it up and I hope you enjoy it. But just keep in mind, every single generation of lower price batteries and better range vehicles is always going to be surpassed by another big milestone. It's just a matter of time. I mean, back when the Model S first came out, you know, that was the best range you could get for the best price you could find in an electric vehicle. And in time, people who bought the Model S probably felt like they paid that early adopter tax because later on, the Model 3 came out and it was significantly cheaper and in some ways better overall. And people today are still enjoying the perks of that vehicle. And because they didn't buy into Tesla as early as the original Model S buyers did, they get to reap the rewards of that that more advanced technology and that better research that Tesla was able to do into making a more efficient EV, one that's more affordable, and they can still go a decent distance on a reasonable amount of charge. So I think once the $25,000 Tesla starts hitting streets, the Model 3 owners now are probably going to start feeling similar to the way Model S owners felt when the Model 3 dropped. They're like, hey, when I bought a Tesla, I had to drop, you know, 40, 50, 60 grand to get a vehicle that could go that far. And now, now, thanks to this upgraded technology and Tesla's further investigation, we can get that type of range or better range or a better type of car with more futuristic features for less money. And I just had to have waited to appreciate that. Not necessarily saying it's a bad thing to wait, but my goal here with the whole question of should you wait for this or will you be okay buying a Tesla today is that it really comes down to when the worth of the vehicle reaches the price point that you think is of good value and you think this will benefit my life, I will enjoy this vehicle hopefully for the long haul and I have the money to comfortably afford it you know I'm not gonna bankrupt myself I'm not gonna be in huge trouble by selling all my organs or selling my house just so I can buy this car if you're not in that situation and the prices do not meet the value that matters most to your lifestyle then wait because there's really no disadvantage to waiting for the next generation vehicle I mean in hindsight yeah it's always easy to be like see we shouldn't have not bought a model 3 a couple months ago we should have waited for the 20 21 Model 3 refresh because then you get the heat pump, you get the better range, and of course you get that matte black trim, you get the power trunk, and once all these updates have been made, it's very easy to say, see, yeah, we shouldn't have bought before that, you should have waited, but truth is, right now, in the present, in the time we're living, it's very hard to know when those big updates, when those site refreshes, or when those battery day announcements are going to happen, you know? Earlier this year, we had no way of knowing that Tesla was planning on building a $25,000 vehicle in three-ish years from now. So someone who was in the market for an EV but didn't want to break the bank may have bought a $35,000 standard range Model 3 and it probably suits their needs well. Is it possible that if they found out about that $25,000 model they would have waited? It sure is, but the truth is Tesla's not stopping with that 25k entry model. They're gonna keep going cheaper and they're gonna keep working on better batteries that go further because their goal does not stop at make a $25,000 electric car. Their 
goal is to accelerate our use of sustainable energy and improve sustainable transport and that does not stop in three years they plan on being around here for long haul they're gonna be around for the next 10 20 30 who knows maybe they'll still be around a hundred years from now if we're alive but if the current day Teslas whether they're 350 mile range or 400 mile range if they offer a great value to you and you have the money to comfortably afford it don't wait because I still think the 2170 cells are going to last you plenty long time I think there will still be minimal degradation and of course if you're kind of the person who cares about full self-driving you will most likely get a much cheaper full self-driving package today than the price of that software package three years from now which at this point and how quickly the price has risen in the past year I wouldn't be shocked if full self-driving is closer to 15 or twenty thousand dollars in three years from now so sure you'll be able to save a lot more money and get a cheaper battery with great range and a more futuristic up-to-date Tesla for a lot less money but you'll probably end up paying a lot more for full self-driving so if you care about that type of thing it's worth considering and ultimately just keep it in the back of your head that the longer you wait the better these vehicles are going to get which is why I would also encourage people to consider that if a Tesla is not that crucial to your lifestyle right now if you're not in a place in your life where you're driving very much because a lot of us are working from home or you don't find yourself in need of your car driving itself anytime soon there's really no harm in waiting because it seems like if you're willing to wait longer you're almost definitely going to be getting a better vehicle than what Tesla is offering today and if you're really curious about those added range benefits maybe what the vehicle's range is right now is not satisfying enough to you or the price isn't good enough there's a good chance that those 4680 sales could be implemented sooner than we think you know Tesla has confirmed that the Model Y is going to be built in Giga Texas and I'm sure that's going to use the new 4680 cells and also Panasonic has announced that they too are working on their own tabless electrode 4680 cells that they want to start a prototype line at the Giga Nevada factory so other companies are catching on which is a good thing by the way no need to diss on Panasonic Tesla said at battery day you know they're gonna ramp battery production as much as they can but ultimately the reason they're coming forward with all this information is because they want everybody to be doing what they're doing they need more companies producing batteries that they can buy from and more companies trying to beat them when it comes to dollar per kilowatt hour and the range electric vehicles can do Tesla cannot do this single-handedly it seems like they are right now but they're really actively encouraging their battery supply chains to do the same things they're doing and find more efficient ways of constructing these things and if that's what Panasonic's planning on doing in Nevada we could see these 4680 cells implemented in a lot more of the Tesla lineup by end of next year or 2022 again it's all speculation and in hindsight three years from now it'll be very easy to know exactly when or what to buy because we'll know about what site refreshes and when batteries get integrated and all that but the waiting game is endless so feel free to let me know do you guys think no one should be buying a Tesla right now until they can ensure they have the 4680 cells or is buying a Tesla with the old-fashioned cells still a decent idea thank you all for watching hope you have an excellent rest of your day take care